I'm on a mission to test every single light therapy lamp on the market, and today I have all 10 of the Verilux Happy Lights. So if you're curious to see all the data that we got on these, stick around because we're going to go over all of it. The lux, the circadian light, the glare, so how much lux per square inch, flicker rate, the spectrum, the color rendering index. We're going to go through all that stuff. These are really popular light therapy lamps, so I definitely wanted to add them to our database, which you can find below, by the way. We'll also go over how they compare to the circadian optics lamps, which are kind of one of the other more popular light therapy lamps out there. Before we get into that, though, I, I actually want to talk to you about how we test our lamps, just so you know, we have a lab grade spectrometer that we place one foot away from every lamp and then we turn it on to its highest setting and we run that for an hour and we take a reading every minute and then we average that data out over the hour. And that is the data you'll find on the database. So we can compare every lamp we test in the same way. Now lux is essentially just how bright a light source is. We typically see 10,000 lux advertised on these devices, which is just, it's misinformation. I, I don't know how else to say it. Essentially any light can be 10,000 lux if you just get it close enough. It's a measurement of light on a square surface area. So it isn't like the total output that we're talking about here. We're talking about something that changes with distance. So saying that your light emits 10,000 lux is arbitrary. If we take a look at the lux the Happy Lights put out, we'll see that the duo floor is the only light that hits this 10,000 lux at one foot. All the other lamps are right around that 4,600 to 4,000 range. The Alba and the Compact start to get a little bit worse. Compact is, is just not worth buying at all. It's an older fluorescent model, just like the full size, although the full size does put out quite a bit more light. I would just skip both of those. What I wanna go over next is a much more important metric. So Lux is sort of the old gold standard of testing light therapy products. There's a much better standard out now called circadian light. It's measuring the wavelengths that activate the circadian system. So whereas Lux is just the brightness of a light, it doesn't necessarily translate into activating the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells in your eyes and a lot of the other parts of the eye that activate the circadian system. So as you can see, the duo floor is still much higher than all the rest, but we do see a couple of the lights shift around here. You can see that the duo desk all of a sudden is higher than the halo. So as before, the halo was putting out about 200 lux more than the duo desk. The duo desk is now putting out about 600 more circadian light units than the halo. So it's almost a shift of like 800 units here. And that's because the duo desk emits a bluer, cooler color temperature light than the halo. And that essentially means it has more light in that circadian effective range. So if you've seen our video reviews of the AO and the Luminet, you'll see that just because a light is very bright doesn't necessarily mean it's as effective as a dimmer light that's bluer. Now I mentioned that the full size and the compact are using older fluorescent technology. I wanna show you a graph of color temperature for all these lights. As you can see in this graph, almost all of the color temperatures of the LED products stay very much the same almost the whole way. And that's how you know that these are pretty high quality LEDs. But you can see that the full size and the compact fluorescent lights change quite a bit more. They're also a lot bluer than all of the other lights. But you can see in this graph that the duo desk is indeed bluer than the halo. And hence, it's a little dimmer technically, but it's actually more effective. Just to give you an idea of the difference between the fluorescent lights and the LEDs, here is a spectral graph of the duo desk, which is a particularly high CR light, which, which we'll get into. And here is a spectral graph of the compact. And you can see that the fluorescent light is just extremely spiky. This is your classic fluorescent uh, spectral graph. It's obviously not very natural. These typical LEDs that the Verilux uses also aren't natural. They're not an even spectrum like the sun puts out, even though they'll advertise as full spectrum, but they're still much better than fluorescence. I mentioned the circadian optics lights. I, I like the happy lights more than those. Here's why. The circadian optics lamps change color temperature pretty wildly. Um, a few of them, like the Lampu there, it just keeps getting colder over that entire hour period. They're not stable like the happy lights are, and that just shows me that they're using 
lower quality lights. They're also a lower color rendering index than the Happy Lights. The Happy Lights as a whole have better color rendering than the Circadian Optics lights. So that's another reason if you're gonna pick between the two that the Happy Lights are the way to go. So now I guess we can talk about color rendering. This isn't the most important thing about a light therapy lamp because you're not, well, you're probably not using it for color sensitive work or really basking in the reflections of the light. But if you want a higher quality light, something that feels or looks a bit more like natural light, you want a higher color rendering index. So essentially how you determine color rendering index is we take 15 different colors and we're trying to see if this light reflects that color the way the sun does. We take an average of all those 15 colors and we have a total score. Uh, 100 means that it is very similar to sunlight, almost indistinguishable to the human eye. And a lower score, like anything under 80, is bad. So as you can see in our graph, the Duo Desk is actually phenomenal. I was really surprised because this is much higher than any other light therapy lamp I have seen thus far. And the Duo Floor is doing pretty good too at 88.6. But all the rest uh, start to go just just from average to poor, like 70 on the compact is just abysmal for a CRI. Even the worst LED light bulbs nowadays are above 80. So I'm working on my own light therapy lamp. It's gonna be hopefully a lot better than all of these, easy to make and fairly affordable. That'll be coming out hopefully soon. If you guys are interested in that, you can subscribe and you'll be notified when that video comes out. So as far as the flicker rate goes for these lights, I did wanna talk about that because some people are concerned about invisible flicker. The onboard power equipment that converts the AC into a DC signal are often very low quality, uh, the capacitors and all that. And what you're left with is a very high frequency flicker. That is the case with almost all of these lights. I'll show you just a quick video of basically every single light, and they're all very high frequency, very high percentage flicker rate, some of them up to 100%. So these are turning off and on and off and on and off and on, but at a very high rate. So we're talking like 20,000 times a second. According to the flicker standard, this isn't an issue. As long as the frequency is high enough, it doesn't have any impact on the visual system or the brain. Brain, it won't cause you a headache, probably not anyways. If you actually look at the fluorescent models, they flicker at a much lower frequency, but the percentage is lower. It looks better on paper. Like it, when you look at the graph, you're like, oh, that looks a lot better. But because it's a lower frequency, even though the percentage of that flicker is lower, it's far more noticeable to the human eye. And so I actually think that the flicker rate on the fluorescent lights is worse than these LEDs. I, I prefer a higher percentage, higher frequency flicker than low, unless it's low enough. If it's a flat bar, that's awesome. So as far as these lights go on the flicker front, I'm not that concerned with any of them. So one more thing that we can talk about with these lights and one of the other metrics we have in our database is the glare rating. So essentially what we do is we take the lux at the highest brightness setting and we divide that into the square inches of the emitting area. So essentially how much lux do you have per square inch? Because broadly speaking, that's how we can determine how comfortable light source is. Now other things come into play like how much ambient light do you have? But if we're just comparing the lights, not the environment the lights are in, this is how we would do that. And so if we compare this metric across the board, we see that the Lux, one of the largest of the lights, is actually one of the most comfortable lights, uh, just because it has lower Lux per square inch. It's gonna be less obnoxious in your field of view than all of the other lights at its brightest setting. And the Lux is actually a fairly bright light, so that's an impressive thing for it to achieve. Now, the Duo Floor is much, much higher glare. It is very uncomfortable to look at. It's one of those lights where if you look at it for a second and you look away, you can't see anything for a few seconds. You have that, you know, that shape of the light right in the center of your vision. Now, obviously all of these lights can be adjusted 
down. That's something that you can play around with to find the brightness that you find comfortable. So yeah, I guess we could talk about the ones that I like the most now. Like I said, I'm working on my own, so I think that's gonna be better than all of these. But if you're looking for a commercial device that you can just buy, plug and play, the happy lights are some of the best lights that you can get, And but there's 10 of them, right? So which one should you get? I think the Duo Desk is probably my favorite. It can go on the desk, you can move the arm around to alter its position. Um, it's a little bit large, so that might be a detriment to some of you depending on your desk setup, but it's just got great color rendering and because of the way the arm moves, you can use it for task lighting. So if you like to write or draw or you do any color sensitive work, so I think that makes it kind of an interesting choice. Um, and it's definitely one of the most high quality happy lights that Verilux makes. So for that reason, it's my favorite. And then you have the Duo Floor, which again is one of the more high quality lights. These are both the newer offerings by Verilux and it shows just because it seems like they're using uh, higher quality LEDs on board. But I like it just because it's so bright and it's a floor lamp. So you can use it in the living room, in the dining room, in the morning, or just on gloomy days. Like if you're playing board games with your kid or something and you just wanna like illuminate that space where you're at. That's why I like it. It's kind of a versatile, unique light therapy lamp. There really aren't any other lamps out there like it. But if you're looking for a more traditional desk lamp that's a little smaller, I have two choices that I like. I like the Lux and I like the Halo. So they both excel in different ways. The Halo is just slightly brighter than the Lux, but the Lux is more visually comfortable as I talked about. The Halo also is portable and you can change the angle of the halo. So you can't do that with the Lux. The Lux is kind of stuck at one angle, but the halo you can you can rotate all around. And none of the other happy lights have that feature. So I think that makes it a little bit more unique. It's also portable, like I said. I don't know how useful that is. Um, if you're in the middle of like a really killer light therapy session and duty calls, I guess you could take it in the bathroom with you because it, it's not very small. You know, it's kind of a, like a medium sized light. So it's not like you're gonna just throw it in your pocket. So I'm not sure how much the battery operated portability aspect of it is that useful. You might immediately go like, oh, I know how I can use that, but I couldn't think of <laughs> any reason. But anyways, it's there. It's, it's a feature that not many other light therapy lamps have, but I like the halo just because it's kind of cool looking. It has a rather large illumination area, so it's not super uncomfortable and it rotates. The other one I liked was the Lux. And the reason I like the Lux is because it's big, it's not too big, and it has a keyhole. So some of the happy lights have keyholes on the back, which means you can mount them on the wall above your desk. And so you can kind of clear up desk space. And you might like that, you might like that clean look. And light coming from above is actually more effective than light coming from below. As, as you can imagine, the sun is always above you. We're, we're meant to receive daytime light from above the eyes. And so if you can mount this happy light somewhere, it's actually a little bit more effective than it would be below at the same distance. That's something that you can do with the Lux that you can't do with the Halo. And the reason I like the Lux over the other options is just because it's brighter. You can always dim it to make it as dim as the other ones, but if you want to make it brighter, you're limited with all of the other options. So yeah, I think that about sums up my review of the Verilux Happy Lights. They're, they're pretty good lights. Some of them are much better than others. I am still hoping to make my own. That I think is going to be really cool. So again, if that's something that interests you, if you guys liked this video, like it, please. Uh, it helps our channel out, helps me out. And subscribe if you're interested in seeing some of the projects I'm working on. Hopefully that'll be out before the winter months come along. So if you're in the market for a light therapy lamp, we don't need it yet. And hopefully this will be done by then and you can make your own full spectrum, high quality light therapy lamp. And it'll be versatile. You'll be able to mount it on the desk, use it on a floor lamp. You won't be able to, you, you know, you, you won't easily be able to take it to the bathroom with you, but you know, we'll figure something out. So just a reminder, we have the light therapy lamp database on the website. We've also tested a bunch of light bulbs. We're going to keep testing stuff as long as I breathe. I will test light products and hopefully in the future we'll get into other stuff as well. But this is just sort of my jam right now. So yeah, that's all I got. Thanks guys.